Next up is a panel discussion moderated by Deepali Kulkarniji. Deepali ji is the Director of Human Rights at the H Hindu American Foundation. She holds an MA in Asian Religions from the University of Hawaii at Manoa, a Master's in Women's Studies from the University of Oxford, and an MPhil in Religion from Syracuse University. Namaste. Thank you for joining our Understanding Hindu Phobia conference panel today, remembering the Bengali Hindu genocide. My name is Deepali Kulkarni, and I'm the Director of Human Rights at the Hindu American Foundation. We have put together a courageous panel today that will speak about the facts of the Bengali Hindu genocide. Before I introduce our panel of esteemed advocates, however, let me first briefly introduce the context of the Bengali Hindu genocide, which many viewers may be hearing about for the first time. Hindus in Bangladesh have suffered through many pogroms in the decades before 1971 and the decades after. Just last year, violence towards Hindus erupted across Bangladesh during Durga Puja after a fabricated blasphemy incident was shared on Facebook. Many were killed, injured, raped, and displaced during this pogrom. The violence towards Hindus in Bangladesh today is thus not just an issue of remembering the past, but protecting those in the present. It is essential for all Hindus and advocates for human rights everywhere to be aware so no community is subject to genocide ever again. Of the approximately 3 million killed, 200 to 400,000 women raped, and more than 10 million displaced during the Bengali Hindu genocide, the vast majority were Hindu. Bengali, Hindu, and Indian identities were imagined as one and the same in the collective imagination of the Pakistan military. Hindus were thus the primary targets of this genocide. Although Bengali language and culture were historically repressed through erasure and violence in East Pakistan, what is now Bangladesh, it wasn't enough to create the Bangladesh secession movement. But it was the callousness of the Pakistan government during a natural disaster. On November 11th, 1970, the Bola cyclone ravaged East Pakistan, what is now modern Bangladesh. West Pakistan declined to send immediate aid. And after this natural disaster, there was immense suffering and loss of human life that was protracted because of the actions of the government. More than 300,000 people died. And so after a democratic election on December 7th, 1970, Sheikh Mujibur Rahman of the Awami League won 167 of 169 seats on the promise to form a separate country of Bangladesh. This would have led to the peaceful secession of East Pakistan from West Pakistan. So after tremendous suffering and hard work, Bangladesh was planning to declare independence from Pakistan on March 26, 1971. This should have been a time for celebration. But on March 25th, 1971, in anticipation of the secession of Bangladesh the next day, and in a show of force, the Pakistan military began Operation Searchlight, the first of three military operations to suppress the Bangladesh independence movement. This began the nine and a half month Bangladesh Liberation War, which is the context of the Bengali Hindu genocide. On the first night, the Pakistan army targeted Hindu neighborhoods and villages, starting first at Jagannath Hall, a Hindu dormitory in Dhaka University. Between 5,000 to 100,000 people were killed in the first night. Indeed, exact numbers are difficult to obtain as many of the records were destroyed or have yet to be released. The then U.S. Consul General in Dhaka had this to say about the beginning of the genocide. Quote, they were not political refugees. They were just poor, very low-class people, mostly Hindus, who were very much afraid that they would be killed solely because they were Hindu. End quote. In addition to these staggering numbers of the killed and displaced, at least 200 to 400,000 were raped during the nine and a half month genocide. By November 1971, approximately 10 million refugees, a majority who were Hindu, had fled to India. Prime Minister Indira Gandhi's officials noted that Pakistan hoped to reduce the number of Hindus in Bangladesh by, quote, driving out Hindus in their millions, end quote. To speak more about the realities of the genocide, we have three amazing guests on today's panel. First, we have Dr. Mohit Roy, an environmentalist and human rights activist. He's a professor of environmental studies from India and had, continues to advocate for Bangladeshi Hindus. He will be introducing the facts of the genocide. And next, we will have Shravani Choudhury, who is going to very courageously share her account of what happened during the genocide for herself and her family. 
Finally, we're here from Dr. Sachi Dastadar, a fierce advocate for Bengali Hindus and the founder and director of the Indian Documentation and Partition, Partition Project, ISPAD. He's a retired professor from SUNY Old Westbury and will speak about the gap of knowledge and advocacy about this genocide and what Hindus can do now to help. So without further ado, let's begin. Genocide of Bengali Hindus in, during the Bangladesh Liberation War has not been uh, discussed much. <clears throat> I'll first give a background that why the Hindus in Bangladesh or that time East Pakistan was targeted. Because right at that time in 1970, the first general election in Pakistan was held where this one person, one vote was taken. Now, we Pakistan had two parts, West Pakistan and East Pakistan. And by population, East Pakistan was nearly 20% more in number. So the assembly seats or the parliament seats, those were more in the East Pakistan, 20% more. And it happened that Aamili, the main political party in East Pakistan, they nearly owned all the 300 seats around 298. So there is a problem into the whole Pakistan institution that the uh, our belief has to be given power for the is is pa Pakistan ruling. Now some of the Pakistan military and the Islamic institution they all didn't have the idea that is Pakistan our belief they really truly represent Pakistan. Because they th had an idea that there is a kind of Hindu conspiracy in the East Pakistan to isolate them from pa Pakistan and all these things. So when Awami League owned such a majority and were to form a uh, government in Pakistan, Pakistan military and also with the West Pakistan Party, People's Party of Mr. Bhutra and others, they did not come to any negotiations with Awami League. So military intervention was there. Now it started on 25th March and the whole idea, the whole planning was that if the nearly 15% Bengali Hindu minorities can be partly exterminated and partly displaced from East Pakistan, it can be have a Hindu free East Pakistan, then they can have a much more purer Pakistan and the Hindu influence in culture, politics, everything can be uh, tackled. So it's a very planned way, ethnic genocide that started on 20th March of 1971 when the Pakistani military intervened in their, there's a code name called Operation Searchlight. And from the 25th March, they started the attack on the Hindus. The first was the Jhaka University Jagannath Hall, which is basically a student's hostel of Hindu students. And then there were uh, Hindu professors and others. Of course, in that uh, attack, number of Muslim liberal professors were killed. But the first target was those Hindu students. Next yes. day, on 26th March, the Pakistani army, they started attack on the Hindu localities within Dhaka, that is called Shakhari Bajar, where about 8,000 people were murdered in a single day and also in the other areas. And from that one, that day, from 26th March to the end of May, Pakistani army went around the East Pakistan to have the total control on that East Pakistan state on major towns. And one of their targets, were the Hindus in the both ways, either kill them or so or so do such a thing that they get out of country. Now, if we come to the numbers, if you see the numbers in the uh, refugees who came from uh, East Pakistan, now still that was East Pakistan to India, is the government of India record is that daily 10 million people. 10 million people, I can give you the exact number as out of this, 93% were Hindus. 
and if you see the statistics of bangladesh nearly all hindus of east pakistan left east pakistan at that time so this can be very easily understood that hindus were targeted specifically which can be called by the definition of united nations genocide basically targeting a community to exterminate themselves totally <clears throat> you will also see that hindus were not the leaders of the army league which were going to capture power so it was not that it was any political act that you kill the political hindu political persons from army league to i mean <clears throat> stop their influence it was to the total community and the massacres were random at least 100 major massacres have been recorded where more than 50 people have been uh, killed or uh, uh, killed now i'll just refer a few numbers of them because you can't say uh, till many of this on 2nd april at jinjira in the dhaka district more than 1000 bengali hindus were massacred in on 16th april dhobtub bill there was 3500 bengali hindus were massacred in jatibhanga that's thakurgaon district there about 3000 bengali hindus were killed in kaliyaganj jaldhaka there are 400 hindus were massacred and the major massacre that is at shuknagar on 28th may there are 10000 to 12000 persons hindus were killed in fact those previously also i said the 3500 people were killed these were the refugees hindu refugees which who were going in uh, teams to india so they are stopped on the way and they were just killed by brush fire is chuknagar massacre is one of the biggest massacre in fact i think in the human history and about all these massacres most of them have have been recorded but the number is in question because as the hindus were murdered and they came out of the country there are not much of exact number of documents in bangladesh they have a organization quite liberal quite secular ghatok dalal nirmul committee they have tried to get the names of these people but they could do very little because the numbers the names are not much uh, available if you see the different kind of research as the how many people have been killed uh, in this during this bangladesh um, uh, liberation period the numbers vary it can vary from 50000 to 1.5 million bangladesh government has an official statement of 3 million people killed not that this 3 million people have been all names are available but if we go through the bangladesh uh, uh, census statistics in what was in 1960 and what was in 1964 and the refugees you can find that nearly 2.5 million hindus are missing and another major uh, killing i was a killing but the people hindus died that who came into the refugee camp nearly 3 lakhs of refugees who came to the number of refugee camp they died of different kind of diseases and starvation and all other things so this is the whole i mean gab out of uh, uh, hindu massacre during this period coming to the issues of rape this raping of this hindu women has been a very common issue during this war period in fact uh, there have been after the war was over in this military camp pakistani military camps they even found that they even preserved some of the you know women's body parts to you know probably to make these women afraid even in one of the military documents is found that they marched in the indian border they marched this women without dresses to show that what they are doing to women 
there are number of places uh, where these women were raped there are some uh, documented at there but only problem is that in case of this kind of happening you do not get very specific names and numbers because of uh, that is our uh, the women's issue the num- names and numbers doesn't come always one of the major thing of massacre as i say it's not only the killing some people and driving out the some people the target was to finish the hindu community totally so another target was that their eminent people should all be eliminated and as i said that the their professors lecturers they are all killed at random and most important person hirendranath dotto who was the first person who raised the issue of bengali language in pakistan parliament in 1948 he was killed brutally in pakistan military camp then there was several major entrepreneurs businessman bengali hindu businessman in uh, east pakistan who are a household name there like ronoda prasad shah nutan chandra they are all major philanthropists and another in fact a bengali household name is called sadhana aushadalay this is a uh, medical company which produces ayurvedic drugs and hits i mean uh, founder director jogesh chandra ghosh was murdered similarly so it was the attempt to finish hindus totally <coughs> in east pakistan as the number was quite significant in uh, east pakistan 15% of the population so they had to carry out this amount of genocide where millions of hindus had to be killed so that the rest of the people they go away and also with this thing as i said it's not that some people being killed to threaten a community is the total extinction of the community so there was the attack on their cultural sites as i said on the first day the pakistani military operation start, started the next day they destroyed ramna kali temple in dhaka ramna kali temple in 1970s was the highest building in dhaka it could be seen from afar and this is was a kind of a, a major presence of hindu cultural identity in pakistan pakistani army targeted that damaged it very severely and killed all the people there who the, the devotees and the pujaris everyone and this was continued in the, all the districts and all the district major tem- temples were vandalized or somehow destroyed so this 19 uh, now this description as i'm saying is not that the muslims were not affected several thousand it may be 10000 20000 number would be like more than that were also killed during this operation but those were mostly killed due to political interference even those villages which has awamelik support or some leaders were there it was targeted but it was not targeted as a community and these also must be said that behind this uh, killings of the bengali hindus the local bengali speaking muslim collaborators were there in numbers these are from jamaat e islam and all the other al badr uh, razakar groups and also some of them have been punished no doubt by uh, the now prime minister sheikh hasina uh, for this mass killings they, they did a november type uh, um, uh, this law situation and they punished them but this was as the experience of the hindu community there even when they went back after the um, bangladesh was created they found that local population muslim population did not welcome them and a major part of them in fact i would say as i said of the chuknagar the massacre where nearly 10000 people were killed there have been documentaries on those victims and they have said that the pakistani army and their collaborators were brought by the local people local muslim people 
who helped in this massacres so this is uh, the situation and there has been and the documentation part as i said that uh, in uh, bangladesh there is a very sensitive and i say very courageous group of historians and social um, uh, science people who have done some documentation all these things they have done some documentation on the mass graves and others but because of the lack of presence of hindus anymore and most of them came to india the data on hindus are not much available i found that my desk uh, my reading desk was uh, as if that there was a tsunami in my room because it my desk was in one side and the all over the place the books were all over the place and then my bed i can't tell you that my bed was uh, as if with a you know the bayonet they poked my the bed and it was a the blood you can see that spot of uh, blood in uh, black mark they are blood mark you can see that that they might have brought some girls here they raped them and they killed them with the bayonet that it was such a horrible scene i'll never ever forget in my life what i saw in my room my own bed that was i didn't include in this story here that what i saw there and then i found that uh, some of the girls said didn't come back so i don't know whether they were killed or because i know that my hall that is rokeya hall was uh, that uh, uh, that uh, was attacked on uh, 25th march night so that one i wanted to add but now i'm going to read my story about my that um, how i spent my days at in 71 and, um, and this is my you can say the testament and uh, sorry testimony so uh, that uh, in uh, on march 7th in 1971 we returned to rokeya hall after listening to historic speech of bongobondhu upon our return to the hall we came to know that all communications with dhaka would be cut off in a day or two my father was then posted in potwakhali those who are of us were from either borishal or potwakhali boarded the launch that means a kind of steamer together sometimes in april the pakistani army attacked potwakhali first they started the air attacks to be followed by shelling and bombing particularly with those igniting bombs at the time of the attack a few of us were playing uh caram at our place we didn't know then what a war was like it was quite difficult to get strong signals on the radio we just realized that a massacre had happened in dhaka yet on the radio we did hear a call for independence read out by major jia on behalf of bongobondhu during those bombings and shelling my classmate pankoj brother of my friend daisy rushed into our house to inform us that the army had landed and we had to flee immediately potokhali was surrounded by ocean and numerous rivers we couldn't think as to where we would go let yet my mother pushed us out of the house through the back door age between 12 and 
we were six in the group. Before we left, I wiped away the sindur. You know that what is sindur. So, uh, from the forehead of my mother, so that she wouldn't be identified as a Hindu. Our area co comprised mostly of the residents of government officials posted in Potwakali. There were no local people. At the back of all these residences, there were a cremation field not used for a long time. And beyond that field was a river. We somehow managed to reach the river. By the bank of the river, there was only one empty boat, but without any oar. We got into the boat, hoping to cross the river. We looked back and saw that all the buildings behind us were on fire because of that igniting bombs. There were dense smokes. Heavy shelling was going on. In fact, shells were falling into the river like raindrops. People were jumping into the river. There were dead bodies, blood screaming all around us. Yet we started using our hands as oars to move forward both the boat and us. At one point, we reached the other side of the river but did not know where to go. With tears in our eyes, we started walking along the bank of the river. On our way, we were met by a gentleman who used to work as a clerk to Ponko's father. He took us on his boat. We didn't know him, yet we trusted him and boarded on his boat. In fact, we had no other option. Throughout the whole day, we plied over rivers, after rivers, and in the evening, at long last, ended up near a jungle. The gentleman anchored the boat there and told us that he would come and fetch us after dusk. That was because he didn't want the villagers to find out that he had given shelter to us. At night, our boat reached the mooring of his house. He took us into a dark room deep inside his house. And we realized later that it was a house within a house. Daisy and I remained there for about 10 to 12 days. The boys in our group had to leave as the gentleman felt that it was not safe for him to keep them there. For the first four to five days, we didn't know whether our parents were alive or dead. Pankoj with his life dwindling in his hand went to our house and informed our parents that we are still alive. Upon his return, we came to know that all Hindu officials had to take Muslim names. And the wife of an officer and her sister, who used to live in a flat just above ours, were raped and assaulted. After 10 days, when army started to pick up girls and women from villages, it was decided that we had to be sent to town. Our debt to the family of this gentleman is boundless. Women of his household gave us their saris to wear. During our return journey, before we boarded the boat, these ladies put ashes on our faces and feet so that we would look like destitute and put, put burqa on us so that we would be looking upon as Muslims. We disembarked from the boat near our house 
and pretended to be two beggars. We couldn't see anything through the burqa, and like two blind people walked almost near to our house. Daisy's place was a little bit inside, so she went there easily, but I was trapped. In front of our house, there was a field, on the other side of which was the circuit house. The army has taken position there with machine guns, binoculars, etc. To reach home, I had to cross the field, and the ch chances were that they could see me. In that case, they might shoot me or pick me up. I still don't know how I managed to walk that distance. When I reached home, my mother took me into a small dark room. In that room, a small flickering light would burn very dimly day in and day out. My clothes were never put outside for drying so that no one would know that there was a girl inside this house. I would remain seated on the bed with a bottle of kerosene well on my side and a box, box of matches in my hands. If at any point in time they came to pick me up, my mother told me that no one would be able to touch me before killing my parents. And if that happened, I was supposed to put fire on me with the kerosene well and the matchsticks. I didn't see sunlight for nine months. I felt footsteps of death every moment. With clenched teeth, I just lived from one day to another and thought, would I live long to see freedom or would I go insane before that? Every night, a Pakistani army major, his name was Major Nader Shah, would come to spend the night with a lady who lived out, upstairs. He used to park his car by that small dark room of mine till the heavy footsteps of that totally drunk were no longer heard. I would shudder in fear sitting on my bed with a bottle of kerosene and the box of matches on my hands. Till now, <coughs> excuse me, till now, after all these years, I am not yet over that fright. In my dreams, I still see fire all around me and feel like trapped inside. That major was ex extremely oppressive. He had set fire and destroyed Adghar Kuriana, a very, it was a the place where mostly Hindus were there. Every evening we could hear firing and bullets. He would just line up innocent people and shoot them. Often he would go to in, go inside the jail and kill the inmates. Then all the dead bodies would be thrown into the river. After liberation, hundreds of women were freed from the circuit house. None of them had any piece of cloth on them, not a thread even. Some were pregnant, some were totally insane. Those women didn't even realize that they were free rather than coming out of the circuit house through the front gate. Some of them tried to flee by toppling the back wall. I myself have witnessed 
so many women jumping into the river many of them were not accepted by their families later they turned themselves into a beggars today some people raise question about the number of women raped and assaulted during those 9 months i just want to tell them you are enjoying freedom and through sacrifices and blood of these women the numbers that you have and utter and know where the actual number of girls and women were assaulted thank you and you could understand it was very difficult for me to read even my statement i wrote it in bengali but my friend dr selim jahan translated it in english which i read now it's a very long subject it's a very very painful topic and one can go on for days and days so um is most of us do not know that in a very short period of time 9 months over 3 million people were murdered by pakistan army and islamists my research shows 90 to 95% were hindu minority it was a higher per day killing rate than the world war 2 extermination campaign american government of nixon kissinger supported the genocide um senator kennedy of massachusetts was against us position he visited refugee camps in west bengal india shockingly us even gave asylum to mass murderers one of those murderers is still living in california in addition canada britain and arab countries and pakistan sheltered this mass murderers um again i mentioned senator kennedy visited refugee camps in in west bengal in india um not one pakistani mass murderer was stopped at the us border us embassy workers in dhaka of the nis pakistan vehemently opposed their government's position c archer k bloods book called the cruel birth of bangladesh memoirs of an in american diplomat published by um, in 2000 and then there is a gary bass who was a diplomat his book is called uh, the black telegram nixon kissinger and a forgotten genocide this was published by nof of united states this is that book one of the books so this is this is really sad sad story that one of the largest genocide of the world nobody has been prosecuted can you believe it um progressives and tolerant individuals were against the genocide but not the islamic republic of pakistan and islamists most of the world didn't know show much reaction unlike ukraine's invasion by russia in, in, right now in 2022 this is where identity comes into play in world politics since india is the only country with nepal where indigenous faith has survived thus there was is no identity solidarity with other converting or converted nations not a single muslim majority nation said a word about the hindu genocide as well as pakistan's campaign to kill secular muslims and members of the winning awmilik party secular western african north and south american nations didn't protest as they are protesting during ukraine invasion i am glad we are protesting now so you know 
I would invite you to come. We have, I'm speaking from the Office of Indian Subcontinent Partition Documentation Project. Here we have tried to document that. Um, its office is located in Jamaica, Queens of New York City. We have a small museum as well. Uh, we will have luncheon on May 14, 2022, Saturday in Queens. Please join us, please volunteer, please help us. We have check our partition documentation center's web called ISPAD1947.org. ISPAD stands for Indian Subcontinent Partition Documentation. And 1947 is where nation was divided. We have a blog called Empire's Last Casualty Blogspot. YouTube's Ishpat 1947 channel, Facebook, Twitter page of Partition Center, and many more. Please come to help us. Please, if you have anything, please write to ishpat1947 at gmail.com. So let me also add, <clears throat> let me also add <clears throat> um, that US president, as I mentioned, supported the genocide of his indigenous Hindu minority by Islamic Republic of Pakistan. President even Nixon even sent US fleet to the Bay of Bengal to support Pakistan's genocide and killing of secular Bengali Muslims, secular uh, um, um, actually and Secretary Kissinger even used vulgar words to demonize Prime Minister Indira Gandhi for India of India, trying to liberate oppressed majority of Pakistan, then called East Pakistan, now Bangladesh. Popular American opinion was against genocide. People marched in cities. Ravi Shankar and rock, rock and roll musician John Lennon raised funds to support liberation of Bangladesh. Nixon Kissinger supported the killings. <clears throat> I have, I have written several books of this cons, not just the genocide, but why people are not supporting it. Um, I started writing in Bengali first in 1989-90 called This Bengal, That Bengal, uh, which was very, very popular in both those countries. Then we have many books, Living Among the Believers, Stories from the Holy Land on the Ganges. There's a documentation of the killing called Empire's Last Casualty, Indian Subcontinent's Vanishing Hindu and Other Minorities. Because in my research shows 19 to 95% of the people who were killed were Hindu minority, the 3 million people. Then we have uh, uh, this book called, it's a, it's a, it has become very popular in America called Mukti, Free to be Born Again. Uh, partitions of Indian subcontinent, Islamism, Hinduism, leftism, and liberation of the faithful. And then there is recently published Bengal's Hindu Holocaust, includes that, of course, the partition of India and its aftermath. And then <clears throat> there is a Bengali book called Eamar Desh, This is My Land, from where we are being driven out. So, so stories go into that. And there is another edition of Mukti, free to be born again. Uh, so, so there are one of the real contradictions is <clears throat> that a very large number of Bangladeshis, Bangladeshi Muslims, secularists, have been writing about this. Yet they have been ignored by the world, by India, including <clears throat> what we in India would in, in Bengal, what we call. <clears throat> Pakistani, Bangladeshi, Indian, Hindu refugees who run, govern two states, state of West Bengal, which is run by Communist Party of India Marxists. Both the chief ministers were from Bangladeshis, yet they have never protested that. Same thing with Tripura. <clears throat> Sorry. This is just, um, you know, this thing is going on. Secular Muslims are protesting it. Probably you know there was a another anti-Hindu pogrom in last October during our fall festival of Mother Durga, Durga Puja. Huge number of people were 
where um, homes were set on fire, temples destroyed, deities, thousands of deities and others. Um, so it is, it is going on. There are secular Muslims who are protesting it. This time, Bangladeshis throughout the world, they protested it, yet we often do not identify with them. This is sad. Since Bangladesh became independent, and its most people who gave their lives were killed and raped were Hindu minority. Yet, since its independence, my this book, from its census, from its census, it finds out <clears throat> that over 30 million are missing from the nation. And since 1947, 50 million Hindu minorities are missing from the from the nation. How many of us? Hindus and non-Hindus, secularist and religious, Western or Eastern, have ever shed a drop of tear for this. Since 1947, my research shows that over 3.1 million Hindus have been killed from 47 till 2001 census. I, I didn't update after 2001 census because of various the various issues, uh, but so three point by now it is a lot higher than that. Yet, yet, how many of us have 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 shown any any um, pain, any sorrow? Uh, <clears throat> now, people often ask me why do I call this a Hindu genocide, <clears throat> not a Bengali genocide? Actually. It is both, but it is primarily Hindu genocide <clears throat> because Islamic Republic of Pakistan army primary target was Hindus for extermination of Hindus. Pakistan's secret Hamidur commission asked the killer generals, did you ask your soldiers to exterminate Hindus? The word exterminate, they asked it. My research tells us tells me, as I mentioned, over 90 to 95% were Hindu minority, although they were by that time, only 22% of the population came down from almost a one third. Um, so so uh, remember in 71, Hindus were target, not Buddhists, not Christians. Actually Christian churches helped some places, uh, Hindus, and their place in, 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 in Rajshahi, where Hindus took shelter in a, in a church and the church priest gave them away to the army and they murdered right outside the church, 75 Hindu men. So this is there and, and there were two Christian, um, uh, Christian uh, groups um, uh, who, who, uh, who actually, uh, two Buddhists who were, were supporting, uh, who went to speak to Buddhist countries, uh, not to. Uh, so it's a Hindu genocide. Uh, I mean, we know in Europe, we don't call Nazis, we don't call European genocide. We call Nazi genocide of Jews or gypsies. So it's very much like that. So there is a lack of recognition. It's part of problem is us and, and that we never speak up. We never stand uh, next to the guy who is being being, uh, being, uh, whose family is being murdered. Actually, I, I interviewed, I met, went to interview a very top politician in West Bengal, whose father, mother, grandmother, grandparents, uncle, aunt, brother, sisters were murdered in, during 19 Noakali, 1946 Noakali killing. He wouldn't say uh, anything. So, so this is so sad for us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you to all of our esteemed speakers today. For more information on academic articles, news pieces, and government documents on the facts of the genocide, please visit genocide1971.com. Namaste. For the latest on our YouTube channel, click subscribe and hit the bell icon for alerts on new content. Remember to like, comment, and share our videos. For more about HSC, you can visit the social media handles listed below.